In this lesson, we will learn how to solve falling body problems in physics. This is question number one. The question reads, consider a ball dropped from the top of a 40 meter tall building. In the first part, we have to calculate everything possible, and we've been given these formulas to help us along the way. So let's get started. The first thing that I wanna do is draw a picture. So let's pretend that we have a building and that will be represented by this rectangle. And there's a ball at the top and it's falling. It's dropped from the top and it goes down. Now, at the very beginning, it has a height, which I'll represent as x sub zero, which means the initial, as 40. And the final height, when the ball reaches the ground, I'll represent that as simply x and it will be at zero. There is gravity pulling this ball down and that has an acceleration. You can call it g or a, it doesn't really matter. It has an acceleration of 9.8 and don't forget that it's being dropped so it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. One other thing that you can write down here is that the velocity or the speed of the ball right at the beginning is nothing. So the velocity represented by v sub zero is equal to zero. So to get some information using these formulas, let's substitute these values into a formula that will result in an output. What I mean by that is if I were to use this formula, I need V and V sub zero to get an output, let's say V average. So I don't have both of these, I wouldn't be able to get that last output. But if I were to substitute my values into here, I should be able to get the time, and here's how. So I know both of these values. I know x, that's the final, it's zero, minus my initial of 40 is equal to zero times t. Notice that that just cancels out, plus 0 0.5, the acceleration happens to be negative 9.8, and t is the unknown which is easily solvable. So subtract these two, I get negative 40 is equal to 0 0.5 times negative 9.8. That is negative 4.9 t to the power of two. Divide both sides by negative 4.9. So negative 40 over negative 4.9 gives me t to the power of two. Notice that these are both negative, so that will give us a positive output. 40 divided by 4.9 gives me the following value. If I square root that to isolate for t, I end up with 2.85. I'll just round that to two numbers or two significant figures. You should get 2.9, plus minus 2.9 actually, but we will only take the positive version because time in this case, it can't be negative. Okay, so 2.9 seconds. Now I have five pieces of information. I have the time, I have the final, the initial, the velocity, and the acceleration. I can now use other formulas to help me out. For example, I can find the final velocity by substituting information into there. So the final velocity is equal to the initial plus the acceleration of negative 9.8 times the time, which is 2.9. So multiplying that out, negative 9.8 times the time of 2.9, I get a velocity, a final velocity of negative 28.42. The fact that it's negative means that it's going down, okay? It's just uh, taking into account the direction. So negative two, what was that again? 8.42, or you can represent it with uh, positive and then simply write down that it's going down the direction over here. And to simplify matters, I will write down only negative 28 and discard the decimals because everything is two significant figures, what we're working with. Now we have V final, we have V initial, X initial, X final, and the time and acceleration. Using this information, we can even find the average velocity if we wanted to. That's the answer to question A. Let's move on to question B. If the ball is thrown down with an initial velocity of 8.0 meters squared, 
So this time our initial velocity is negative 8.0 meters squared. I put this negative because the ball is going downwards, but you could have left it as positive just as long as you made the initial value as zero and the final value as 40 as opposed to this way and change the acceleration to positive 9.8. Okay, but since I'm taking into account direction, I made this negative. Find the time for the ball to reach the ground. So this time they're looking for the time and the velocity on impact. So the final velocity, that two should be a negative value. Now, how do we do this? Well, we will continue to use the following two pieces of information and the acceleration, actually. We need to find out the time. So we can use this formula if we wanted to. We can write down 0 minus 40 is equal to an initial velocity of negative 8.0 t, you see, plus 0 0.5 remember our acceleration is negative 9.8 t squared. And this is where your math comes into play. This looks like a quadratic, so we'll need to use the quadratic formula. I will simplify that part, that's negative 40, and then take it over. So I have 0 is equal to 0 0.5 times negative 9.8 t squared, that part doesn't change, minus 8.0 t plus 40. Okay, so now we go into our calculator. I have the quadratic formula on my calculator so it can do it right away for me, but you can use the quadratic formula by hand and you'll still get the same answer. So 0 0.5 times negative 9.8, that's the A term, see the X squared term or the T squared term in this case, negative 8.0 and positive 40. And from this, we should be able to get two t values. One of them is 2.1 or 2.2, and the other is negative, which I'll just ignore. So the time is 2.2 seconds. If you throw it at an initial velocity of eight, then you see the time, there's a big time difference between the other question where the velocity was zero, 2.2 versus 2.9. Then they're saying, well, we found t, then v final can be found, well, Let's see which formula incorporates that. This formula incorporates V final. So let's use that formula. We have the final X as zero, the initial as 40 is equal to 0 0.5. The V final is position first plus the initial velocity, which was negative 8.0. And the time we just found, we wrote down 2.2, but remember, you don't want to use any rounded numbers while you do the other problems. Instead of 2.2, I believe it was 2.15 before rounding, so use that, 2.15. Now let's solve this really quickly. There's no need for this zero. We have negative 40, and we're going to divide both sides of the equation by this factor and this factor to eliminate it on the right side we get 0 0.5 times 2.15. And on the right side, we have V sub F minus 8.0. We will eventually take this term over. But let's find out what the left side is using our calculator again. Negative 40 divided by 0 0.5 times 2.15. We get this number plus 8 that is roughly equal to 29 meters squared. So I'll write down 29 meters squared down. Notice that if you write down the direction, you don't need to include that minus symbol. If you'd like to see the answers to questions C and D, feel free to leave a comment below and I will gladly upload the solutions to these two problems. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and in our next video, we'll be covering another example related to falling body problems. Talk to you soon.